Greetings to the Living Church of God. We'd like to thank the Lord for another opportunity that has been given to us to come again and gather on our fifth, uh, fourth quarter first lesson. Uh, our fourth quarter, we, on, in this fourth quarter, we are concentrating or we are zeroing in on the concept of death, dying, which is our hope. Uh, as I have been looking on that theme of this fourth quarter, what I have noticed is without hope, we are nothing. Just like oxygen is needed by the body for an individual to live, we also need hope to live. For, for today, we are going on our first lesson, which is a rebellion in a perfect universe. A rebellion in a perfect universe. When we, when we consider uh, the, the term rebellion, we will notice that a rebellion is an outbreak against the present authority. That's a rebellion. So here, the lesson is bringing uh, to, to, to us, or is bringing us to, to a special uh, 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 thing where we are going to, to, to see that for sure, when the Lord created, everything was perfect. By the way, the Bible is very, is very clear that the Lord is all-powerful and perfect. And when he created, he created things in perfectness. If you read uh, the, the, the Bible in Genesis chapter 1, verse 31, it, it, it actually says, and when the Lord had finished everything, he saw that it was good. So, my question is, if the Lord, after creating everything, taking a look or beholding, seeing that everything was good, so, if everything was good and perfect, by the way, the term perfect, we are, we are saying rebellion in a perfect universe. So, when we are saying perfect universe, perfect goes hand in hand with the good. So, when the Lord behold everything after creation, he behold everything was very good. So, if everything was very good, if everything was very good, how come we have a rebellion? How come we have a rebellion in a perfect environment? As we, as we consider the Bible, the Bible clearly states that for sure the Lord doesn't require the universe to live. Why? If you read Genesis 1 verse 1, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. So if God created in the beginning, by the beginning, we, 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 are talking, we are now talking of time. Meaning, time started before the beginning began, God was there. Meaning, he is able to exist out of time. He is able to exist out of matter, for he created the heavens and the earth. So, on this one, we are, we are, we are, we are, we are talking... Uh, about someone who is self-existing, who doesn't require anything for him to exist, that's our God. So, if he is self-existing, by the way, by the term beginning, beginning goes hand in hand with Alpha. Alpha, if you read the book of uh, Revelation, John uh, actually mentions that he is the Alpha and Omega. So if he is the Alpha, Alpha means he is the beginning. He is the first. By being the beginning or the first, uh, dear friends, the Bible is actually saying for, for things to begin, there was a need of him to make things exist. Allow me to, to put this one across. If the Bible is saying he is the Alpha and Omega, I would like to suggest the Bible is trying to explain uh, God's existence 
which is a, 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 a ministry. We cannot even uh, say he, he started to live on this certain time up to this certain time. If we read in the Bible, every creature was created by God. So the commencement of anything and the continuance, uh, or in the continuance of every creature depends on him. So everything that has a beginning has its own ending unless he himself decide otherwise. Let's not forget that we are, we are, our lesson is talking about rebellion. Rebellion in a perfect universe. So if it's rebellion in a perfect universe, how come him after creating a perfect environment? For Genesis 131 stated that uh, he saw everything perfect, everything good. So how come if he created everything perfect, we have sin with us, we have evil with us? How come we are experiencing that? If we then take note of Genesis chapter 3 from verse 1 to verse 5, it clearly points out that the fall of Adam and Eve brought sin, evil, and death into the world. So the reason why we have sin with us, it is because of the entrance of it through Adam and Eve. If you read, Paul, Paul actually says, with one man, sin entered into the world. So through Adam, sin entered into the world. Maybe let me just state this one. If you, you uh, Paul, Paul, Paul put it across in a, in a favorable way, for he actually says, through Adam we die, but through Jesus we live. Jesus came to help us to live. So the reason why we, 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 we had sin, it is because of something that is, that is a mystery way which we are going to, 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 to try and, and, and actually ponder on. So maybe let me, let me come this, uh, the, the, this end. If sin entered through Adam and Eve, we, we, we saw sin or we see sin being manifested before they are fall. For Genesis chapter 3, verse 1 to 5, it clearly states that the serpent talked to, to Eve. So they, 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 they had such kind of a talk or a talk. If the serpent there, they were talking. So sin before Eve ate the fruit, it was there. And here we see it being manifested in the serpent. So we now have a question. What's the real origin of sin? What's the origin of sin? We, we, we have seen that in the, uh, in the context of this earth or in the context of this world, sin came because of what? Uh, sin, uh, sin came because of what happened uh, with Adam and Eve, that they ate that fruit. But before they ate the fruit, we already had sin, and we saw that sin, or uh, today again, we see that sin being man, uh, manifested through the, through the serpent. What's the source and origin of Eve? Maybe let's, let's, let's open our Bibles in the book of Ezekiel 20, 28. We will read uh, verse, verse 15. It reads, Thou wast perfect in thy ways from the day that thou wast created till iniquity was found in thee. Ezekiel 28 brings in picture a king. If you read it from verse 1, it brings in picture a king from, from Tyrus. Even if we read verse number 12, king of Tyrus, it brings that king in picture. And this king, Bible, the, the, the Bible clearly states that this was a man in the ancient past, in the Phoenician uh, back then. So these guys, what they would do, uh, the king would call himself a god of some sort. After calling himself a god of some sort, he, he, he accumulated some wealth 
through, through, through those things of giving himself a certain position. He, was pri uh, he, he, he had pride to such an extent that, that, that he would differentiate himself from other, from other fellow kings, from other fellow human beings, to such an extent that he would view himself as a god. So the book of uh, Ezekiel, chapter 28, after giving us such kind of a scenario, it then turns from verse 12. It starts to, to, to shed a light of someone again who, who, who is called Lucifer. Lucifer. We, we see Lucifer here being compared to this king. Are we together? He is being compared to, 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 to this king. This king, by the way, he, he, he was as existing somebody. It was not like it's, a, it's like a, a, to say it's a, just a story. It was someone who, who existed. Even if we check uh, ancient history, it actually shows that there was a, 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 such a man, the king of Tyrus, who is, who is mentioned in the Bible. So after that, the Bible is comparing him to this man, Lucifer. Of interest, verse 15 that we read, it actually said, thou wast perfect from your creation. Now talking about Lucifer. So maybe before I go any further, let me, let me put this one across. When God created Lucifer, he created a perfect being. What happened? Maybe let me, let me take you to, 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 to a setting where we, we see the beginning of sin. If we read our Bibles very well, we will see that Exodus 25, God speaking to, 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 to Moses and, and, and the others. 25 verse 8, let them make me a sanctuary so that I may dwell among them. When the sanctuary was, uh, was being made, the Bible clearly states that this sanctuary was being uh, made taking the, uh, the, 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 the real thing from heaven. And then the sanctuary, it had an outer, uh, outer court, then it had a holy place, then the most holy place. The most holy place, that's where the glory of God, we read the Bible, actually says that's where the glory of God is. Then when we read the Bible, the Bible says, sin or the devil, or uh, maybe before we, 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 we call him the devil, Lucifer. Lucifer was one of the officers of God. The officers of God, we see the throne of God in the most holy place. That is to say, Lucifer had an office in the most holy place. The most holy place, the setting of the most holy place, that's where we see the glory of God. By the glory of God, if you read uh, the book of Revelation, John trying to explain this glory of God. He actually refers and he actually talks about the sea of glass. Let me say there is nothing that is called a sea of glass. What John saw, if, if you read it very well, he actually says uh, you saw a sea of glass in a fire like trying to explain what you saw, John. The sea of glass that was seen by John, it was the glory of God that was overflowing from, for, uh, from the most holy place. So what am I saying? Where, the, uh, where Lucifer was, he, 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 he was in the, in the holy place, in the most holy place. In this most holy place, we are, we, we are, we, we are actually saying that's where we are, we, we are viewing the overflowing of the glory of God. Of the glory of God. So maybe let me put this one across. If you we, if we have noticed... Uh, when the presidents are walking. When the presidents are walking, they have guards with them. So you, uh, as they enter a building, usually people, to show respect, they stand. So let me bring a suggestion. If this man was so close to God, if God would visit the, uh, the heavenly beings, Lucifer was with God. So as they would visit, as they would visit these fellow 
are heavenly beings. The fellow heavenly beings would express their respect to God. As they will be respecting God, they will also be uh, respecting, again, the ones who are with God. Are we together? When, when the president enters a room, everyone stands. As he stands or she stands, she will be standing as well for the God of the president. So, I would like to, to suggest that after some time of, uh, of some duties, during leisure time, this is the suggestion. During le leisure time, in this suggestion or my, my, my imagination, I would imagine the devil coming out of the most holy place, uh, going to the, to, the, to the fellow angels. And the fellow angels, as they, will, uh, uh, as they will see Lucifer coming, they would see a special glory from Lucifer. Seeing that special glory, they would notice that this Lucifer is of a higher position. Uh, if you read very well, we will notice that Lucifer was created almost like Christ. Get me right? Lucifer was created almost like Christ, but Christ wasn't created. So being created almost like Christ, so, when he would look in a mirror, seeing himself, and looking again unto Jesus, he would be like, ah, I think we are, we are the same. If you read the Bible, the first discovery of sin was made in, in the northern part. The first discovery of sin was made in the northern part of the sanctuary. Because that's with the glory of God. The, the glory of God that was seen by John overflowing. That's where we see the, the image or the intruding of sin. So if sin came as an intruder before the presence of God or in the glory of God. By the way, when we are talking of the glory of God overflowing. By overflowing, what we know that overflows is water, right? So, let me, let me put it this way. So, the devil, the Lucifer, would bathe in the glory of God. Because the glory of God would, over, would overflow in the most holy place. That's where we sin. That's where we see sin coming from. So let me, let, me, let, me, let me make this statement. Sin does not need a sinful environment to express its sinfulness. Sin can be expressed in a perfect environment. It's very easy to describe and explain the sinfulness of someone. It's very easy to explain sinning. But it's impossible to explain sin. Actually, we, we, we don't have adjectives to describe sin. In other words, I'm saying sin started right in the presence of God in a real perfect environment. In that real perfect environment, sin entered. After sin <laughs> and, uh, entered, if you read the book of Revelation, uh, chapter 12, we see that there was war in, in, in heaven because of, of sin that entered. So what are, what are we saying? What are we saying in this lesson? The lesson is coming to us, showing us how big sin is. By the way, my fellow leaders, my leaders here present, 
my fellow human beings here listening. The first sin that was committed, it wasn't adultery. The first sin that was committed, it wasn't stealing. But it was pride. The mother of all sins is pride. The devil seeing himself and seeing uh, Christ. By the way, the great controversy is not between Lucifer or Satan and God. The great controversy is between Lucifer, Satan, and Christ. So when Lucifer would see Christ, he would see someone of his level. So he wanted to be, if you read chapter 28 of Ezekiel, yeah, the, Bible, the Bible actually says he wanted to, to take his, uh, his position to be, he wanted to be like God because Christ was God. And Christ is God. That's pride. Pride is very, very dangerous. You might live thinking you, you, you don't have pride, well, at least you have pride. We have uh, people whom when you listen to, they, 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 they seem to, to be spiritual people. Ah, uh, you, 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 are, you, are, you are gathering, so they are, they are dishing their meal there. Ah, no, in India, that's in Shona. Ah, I repented. I no longer go for meat. Yes, you are a vegetarian. But why can't you express your way in, in such a way that we won't say, ah, this man, I think he, 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 he does have pride. Someone will be like, ah, during Lord's Supper, he or she is giving a testimony. Ah, Ah, I would like to thank the Lord. It is because of the Lord's mercies that I'm here. Ah, yeah. Yeah, what I did on that day, it was very great. I tried this and this and this and this, and it worked for me. Check the lines. He's, at first, he said, I would like to thank the Lord. And, and then as he is testifying of the Lord, he's not putting God He's saying, I did this and this and this. That's pride. So, as we'll be, as we'll be living, the lesson is actually saying, sin is a, is a great mystery that came to the Lord. That came right before the presence of God. And it emerged and there, was dis uh, and, uh, and there was discord in heaven. What Revelation actually says there was war in heaven. To an extent that if you read the Bible, the Bible actually puts across that a third of angels came to the side of the devil. What am I saying? Be careful of whom you follow. Hey. If you read verse, uh, verse, verse 14 and 13, it actually states that the devil or Lucifer, before being the devil, he was created in, 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 in such a way that his tambourines and pipes uh, were prepared, in, uh, were created in, in, in God's workmanship, in, in, in a unique way. So I would like to suggest it was easy for him to take a third of angels using what God had, uh, had given him. It's very easy for us as well to take other people from God because of what God has given us. Some will take people from God because of different things. Some because of talents, we play soccer, we go play soccer on Sabbath because of this and this. We, we, we leave the real men who gave us those talents 
and, 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 and those riches that we have. So the lesson is coming to us, saying sin doesn't need a sinful environment to express its sinfulness. So if sin doesn't need a sinful environment to express its sinfulness, sin can express itself anytime. But thank God, the reason why he created the universe, it was because he wanted to express his love. The reason why he had to create the universe, it was so that he would express his love to the universe. So we are here to express God's love. We are here to receive God's love. And not just to receive, we are, only, we are not only capable of receiving God's love, but we are capable of expressing that love to others. If we don't love others, we don't know God. For the Bible actually says, if you, if, if, if you don't love, you don't know God. So we are there to love one another. So as we believe in, let's know that sin is a mystery. While it's a sin is a mystery, let's take care of one another. We have a tendency that when one sins, we'll be like, ah, yeah, yeah, he was too much. Ah, she was too much. Now it's on, it's on his side. Now it's on his side. But let me, let, me, let me say this to the church of God. Sin is a mist. Since the entrance of sin, God is in the purpose, is in the efforts, is in the work, is in the business of removing sin. So let's take part in that process of removing sin. How do we take part in that process? By praying for one another. For alone, we won't be able to, to live a holy life. But with Christ, everything is possible. So let's pray for one another. We are soldiers in the army. Soldiers in the army. Uh, I, I was reading this other time of a great man. This great man, he's a great man and is known to be a great man even in history. He's well respected. But I read that during his child, uh, his child uh, life, he had an accident, and that accident disturbed or fractured his right side. After that fracture of the right side, when they would go for a war, his best friend, they were together, and he knew that his commander had a fracture a fracture uh, at the right side. So every time this friend of this great man would fight at the right side to make sure that nothing comes at the right side of the man. And the man obtained glory. People, uh, many people didn't know that the man had a fracture at the right side. Up until his death, the man stood and testified. That's when people started to know. What am I saying? Let's stand on the weakness side of our fellow beings. If we know that this man has a weakness on this part, uh, this friend of ours does have a weakness on this part, let's stand on that part so that she won't be affected, so that you won't be affected and you will be prepared to see God when he, when he comes. May the good Lord bless you. This is the lesson. Sin is a mist, but with the God, we'll be able to, we'll be able to get there. May the good Lord bless you. Let's, let's pray as we, as we close. Let's bow our heads as we pray. Our gracious heavenly Father, we'd like to thank you, O oh God, because you are a loving God. After the entrance of sin, you are with us always. You are standing with us you are fighting for us. At the moment, we know that uh, as Christ is ministering in the most holy place, he is interceding on our behalf so that one of these days, oh God, we will leave this sinful world. We will leave this place for this is not our home. We, we long for that blessed home. May you be with us as we are going to listen to this, as we are going to, to, 
to, to read a lot of, uh, of, of this kind of stuff. Help us, oh God, to stand for one another. Help us, oh God, to know that sin is a big problem. Sin is not of our size. The devil is not of our side. It's not of our size. But what we know is, with, is that with the God, we'll be able to, to conquer. Actually, we are more than conquerors. Thank you, God, for, for, for hearing this prayer. We pray all this in the wonderful name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you.